Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Hammond Lumber Company with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956. Committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. From the Portland Expo, it's the MPA Boys Class B State Championship between the Orono Red Riots and the Oceanside Mariners. And I don't know if you can take another game like we had the first one, but we got a great one coming in here tonight. The Oceanside Mariners and the Orono Red Riots. I'm Dave Cheever along with Brendan Terrell. 
Brendan, I don't know. Uh, good luck finds us. We get a game like that one, and then we get two teams like this one coming in. Yeah, I don't think there's a seat left here in the house in the Portland Expo to watch these two teams try to write a new chapter in their school's history book. For Orono, they haven't won a state title in boys basketball since 1981. Haven't played for a state title since 1996. They were the seventh seed that year. They knocked off in the quarterfinals the Rockland Tigers. Of course, Rockland joined with Georges Valley to create Oceanside High School in 2011, and they are also looking for their first gold ball in their school's history. Um, got a guy here who's going to try to stop that, and that's Ed Katala. He's standing by with our floor reporter, Greg Levinsky. Coach, you might, your team might have the honor of having the longest trip to Portland for most of the state championships, but I'm sure your guys are ready. What was the message to them going into this one? Well, just come out, be aggressive. You know, one of the great things, I guess, about uh, high school basketball now, kids know each other from everywhere, and so we're somewhat familiar that some of our guys have actually played uh, as travel teams with some of these guys, but we know we've got to defend. Uh, this is an explosive offensive group. And if they get on a run, it could be a really long night. We talked about how explosive they are offensively. What are some of the things you're going to try to work in defensively to stop them? Well, I think you've got to get yourself back. The transition, they are so good. But the thing is, it's not as simple as just running back and covering the paint. If you do, you're going to see one of the twin brothers rain a three on you. Offensively, what are we going to look for from Orono? Well, hopefully we'll get good movement, both with the ball and with people. And... I'm almost as concerned as if our quality of shots are good, we should have good defensive balance. And that's because, again, you got to be back. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. Thank you, Gre Thank you Greg. And, uh, you know, we just saw a great comeback in, in game number one. Well, Oceanside was in it in the regional final against the Yarmouth Clippers. They were up big and had to come back and win in overtime. So... They're not going to take anything for granted, and not a bad season for the Oceanside Mariners. Look at that points per game average for Oceanside, just a hair under 80 points per game. That's good for number one in the entire state of Maine. You heard Coach Catala for Orono say that any time you have a high school team in a 32-minute game that's averaging 80 points, that's a different kind of animal. It's a huge task for the Red Riders to shut them down here tonight. Did I go the wrong way on that? I think I did, because standing by is Ed Katala. Larry Reed was meeting with Greg Levinsky. Greg is now standing by with the Orono Red Riot coach. Did I get that right? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we heard from Coach Ocean Katala. Side. Never mind, Coach Reed. Katala. Here we go. Yeah, Coach, I mean, you've played a bunch of games here already. You're very familiar with this court. What's the message to the guys for this one? Enjoy it. Embrace it. Not everyone gets this opportunity to be here. It's a lot of fun. Work hard for 32 minutes. The best team will win. The narrative about your team is they score a lot, but I know you do a lot of other things. What are some of the things you're trying to accomplish in the game for these guys? We have to play great team defense for 32 minutes. When we play great team defense together, then we're a tough team to beat. Offensively, we have to move the ball. If we stand around, we're very guardable. If we move the ball inside and out from one side of the court to the other, then we're very successful. If there's one key to stopping Orono, what would you say it is? You've got to limit their transition. They get the ball to Walsted all the time. He pushes the ball up the court quickly. He's not just a good shooter. He's a good passer and dribbler. You have to limit him as much as you can in the open court. All right, Coach, best of luck. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Brennan, we talked in the first game. There was only one senior on the floor for both teams. There aren't a whole lot more in this game coming up. And when you're looking at, at Oceanside, they have – Alex Collins and Alex Bartlett as seniors. they got a couple of guys who come in off the bench, but overall, sophomores and juniors. Yeah, these two teams aren't going anywhere next year either, uh, unfortunately, for the other teams in their respective conferences. They're both led by juniors, and they're both led by brother combos. For Orono, it's the Francis brothers, Ben and Will, and for the Mariners, it's the Galley twins, Carter and Cohen. And anybody who saw the tournament with Oceanside, uh, the Galley twins, do make your life miserable because they can score inside, they score outside, and they're not bashful. Yeah, Carter Galley had 31 points in the regional final against Yarmouth, 22 in the first half alone. He buried six three-pointers. You can't let Carter get hot. And Cohen also added 18 points in the regional final against Yarmouth, including four big ones in overtime to take down that first regional crown in school history. Another kid that we're looking at is number 10 is Pierce Walston. In fact, all of these kids from Orono, they do not step back from any challenge. I, I, it was very impressive to see them coming through in the north. 
Yeah, Pierce Walson is just 35 points away from 1,000 for his career as a junior, which is very as a impressive. Junior. Yeah, the average is just under 18 points a game. He can really fill it up. And the Francis brothers, one's a junior at Penn, and uh, Will is a sophomore. So, again, youth is going to be served in this game tonight, too. And as soon as the kids settle down, we'll see what happens. Oceanside in the regional final got out in a hurry, uh, much the way uh, we saw Ellsworth do in the first game tonight. If they do that again here, I, I'm not going to count it 4 0 out. Yeah, Oceanside comes into the game on a 15 game winning streak. The only game they lost all season was way back just after Christmas, a two point loss to Winslow. Orono, for their part, you mentioned the Francis brothers. Will Francis is typically their best defender. He guarded Ellsworth Chance Mercier in the regional final. You have to think he's going to be matched up with Carter Galley in tonight's marquee matchup. Uh, both teams may have expected to be here, but boy, did they have to work together. Let's go to Don Atkinson and meet who the players are for the respective teams. Sportsmanship is respect for the game of basketball and for those who play it. Sportsmanship means taking personal responsibility for keeping this game at a high level of fair play. Sportsmanship is appreciation of all performances and the graceful acceptance of the results. Sportsmanship, the only missing piece is you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Maine Principals Association welcomes you to the James A. Banks Portland Exposition Building for the 2023 MPA Basketball Tournament. Today we feature the state championship game in Boys Class B. Today's finalists, the Northern Maine champions in their maroon uniforms with a record of 18 wins and three losses the Red Riots of Orono High School. And the Southern Maine champions in their white uniforms with a record of 20 wins and one losses, the Mariners of Oceanside High School. The official scorer for tonight's game is Ellen Durgan. The timer, Tyler Berthume. The scoreboard operator, Paul Marquis. The music coordinator is Jake Hodgkin. And the certified trainer in attendance, Anne Marie Bouchard. Tonight's championship officials are Mr. Richard Nolan, Mr. Randy Caswell, and Mr. Dick Gordon. Now let's meet the team members for each team. Beginning with the Northern Maine champion Red Riots from Orono High School. A freshman number 12, Brady Hughes. A junior number 14, Caden Gray. A freshman number 22, Bergen Soderberg. A junior number 30, Luke Soctoma. A junior number 40, Sebastian Vanettestein. A junior number 42, Adam Sherman. A junior number 44, Mason Kenny. And a freshman number 52, Matt Allen. Team personnel for Oceanside. A sophomore, number two, Zach Woodman. A sophomore, number five, Parker Darge. A sophomore, number 10, Dominic Frizone. A freshman, number 11, Jackson Kay. A junior number 15, Ben Tripp. A junior number 22, Joey Bell. 
a junior number 24, Maddox Robichaud. And the senior number 31, Jack Elwell. And now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. At guard for Orono, a junior number 10, Pierce Walston. At guard for Oceanside, a sophomore number one, Zeb Foster. At guard for Orono, a senior number 20, Ellis Spaulding. At forward for Oceanside, a senior number 14, Alex Bartlett. At guard for Orono, a junior number 24, Ben Francis. At center for Oceanside, a senior number 21, Alex Collins. At forward for Orono, a sophomore number 32, Will Francis. At guard for Oceanside, a junior number three, Cohen Galley. At forward for Orono, a sophomore number 50, Noah Schaff. And at guard for Oceanside, a junior number 12, Cotter Galley. Orono is coached by Ed Kotala, assisted by Ryan Charette and Braden Soul. Oceanside is coached by Larry Reed, assisted by Jeff Woodman, Carl Woodman, and Trevor Reed. Nice officiating crew in here tonight. Rich Nolan will be the lead official. He and Randy Caswell are out of Central Maine. Dick, I think, I, I think he's Southern Maine. I'm not sure. I haven't seen him officiate yet, but I know the other two guys pretty well. And already the fans are well into this. They were treated by the first game. Listen to this place. It's wild in here. And with that, the Orner Red Riots win the tap. They go down low, and immediately the block by Collins and the ball thrown out of, way, out of bounds. Nice Into the shot. ocean side bench. Nice shot by Collins to challenge that without fouling. He threw the outlet pass right out of bounds. Got to settle in here. Francis back to Pierce Walston. Walston. Spalding. Old man on the team here. Spin move to Francis. Up and in. Nice spin move in the paint for Ben Francis. He gets the first two points of the ball game. Zeb Foster on the dribble. Picked up by Will Francis. Comes to Cohen Galley. Cross court to Bartlett. Cohen Galley. Baseline. No shot. Says Randy Caswell. And we're going to get a bump foul. A little hand check going on. See Randy Caswell. Demonstrative call there. Maybe on Spalding. On the dribble drive. A little hand check. Should be on the floor. Looking to inbound. Bartlett. No good. Francis off of the rebound. Ahead to Walston. Walston gets away from trouble. Cohen Galley. Now Foster picks him up. Francis behind the back dribble. Comes left side to Spalding. Ben Francis to Spalding. They loop inside to Will Francis. A little push off. Up. No good. Ball kept alive by Bartlett. Down with it. Carter Galley. Has tough sledding on the inside on both ends here. Big boy basketball. Carter Galley. Pull up jumper. Hand check. And he's going to say not in the act of shooting. Foul's going to be on Walston. It's in the replay. Crossover dribble here by Galley. Little pull up Jay. Foul on the to Collins. Collins looks inside the Bartlett. 
comes instead to Foster. Foster. Cohen Galley for three. Short, but in. Nice just roll friendly bounce. Full court press here applied by the Mariners. 2 2 1 variety. Walson, front court to Francis. Looking for help. Ball knocked out of bounds. Good play by Zeb Foster. They tried to find Noah Schlapp. Schaff. Ball knocked away from him. Now, Ben Francis. Schaff. Will Francis. Looking for Walston. Walston. Bartlett jumps out to try to double team on him. Walston ran into traffic. Foster almost on the steal. Little bank shot up and in. Nice play. Nice Here's hesitation. Walston. Hesitation dribble by Walston. Get the defender to stop. Go past him for the deuce. Boys are going to give him a hard time about that bank shot, but. <laughs> might have Ooh, knocked it. out of bounds by Bartlett. Greg, what do you got? Well, as you know, Oceanside is sort of the home team here, having played all of their tournament games, and I'm sure everyone knows that they can score like crazy, but in the playoffs, they've had to play a different game. They've had to come from behind a couple of times, and then they really haven't scored in that 80 points like they did in the regular season. Pass. Nice entry pass from Walston. Third different Red Riot to get into the scorebook. Foster on the dribble over cut. Doesn't go. Spalding on the defense and that back comes Francis. Francis again behind the back dribble. Schaff up and in. Pretty move by Will Francis. Still behind the back. Little bounce pass off the shaft. Gets the two. Zeb Foster takes a look. Red Riots willing to let the Mariners come to them. In the lane, a little strong off the back rim. Galley up, still no good. Collins with the rebound, up and in. Tough angle shot by Carter Galley, but Collins cleans it up, gets two. Will Francis comes to Ben Francis for three. Makes it look easy. Three ball, Orono's first from deep. Ben Francis has five points. Six point game, Oceanside trailing but with the ball. Good defense. Ben Francis sent away for the layup up and in. Seven points for big Ben Francis. Larry Reed wants a timeout. 3.53 to go. First quarter, 13-5. Orono. See here in transition, Coach Reed talked about it in the pregame. we got to get back against Orono. Ben Francis runs the floor and finishes. And he, he shows why. <laughs> hey, Ben, run the floor. Hey, season six of high school's push show Maine returns. That's coming up on March 23rd. Tune in to watch schools from around the state match wits and compete for a $1,000 prize. This season, schools from Fort Kent to South Berwick will battle it out for that championship. All starts Thursday, March 23rd, 8 p.m. on Maine Public Television. Right now, you're watching Maine Public Television, the boys' Class B state championship. Congratulations to Ellsworth and girls Class B. Congratulations to Old Orchard Beach girls in Class C. Order Cohen Orchard. Galley, cross court to Carter Galley. Ben Francis guarding. Carter drives baseline, puts it up and in. Good strong drive by Carter Galley along the baseline. Got the position he wanted. Finishes for two. You know, I'm surprised they let him have the baseline. They closed him off. What would have happened? <laughs> he probably would have elevated and taken the jumper. Pierce Walston. No. Carter Galley down to the loose ball. He elevated and took the jumper. Didn't make it, though. Only a matter of time. <laughs> Carter Galley. Blocked by Will Francis. Francis gets it back, runs away from Cohen Galley, makes the layup. There's the Orono Red Riot transition game right there. Up ahead to Will Francis, yeah. fights off the defender, finishes. Larry Reed. Yeah, you got to get back, guys. Sounds prophetic now. Zeb Foster. Carter Galley. For two. See the elevation on that 
elbow jump shot by Carter. Rattles it home. Pierce Walston, slow dribbles into the front court. Takes a look at Zeb Foster, comes to Will Francis. Francis draws a crowd. Back to Walston, well outside the high school three-point line. Gets inside on Bartlett. Is tied up. No travels. Randy Caswell says that's a travel. Going to be a turnover on Walston. Big stop for Oceanside. Looking he to wanted a different call. Six. He would have been willing to take a held ball, which still would have wound up possession going to the Mariners, but... Get the arrow, at least. Get the, the arrow, anyway. Yeah. What do you mean, travel? <laughs> <laughs> I only took a couple of steps. Foster on the dribble. Left hand. Heads over to the right side. Into Bartlett. Bartlett into the lane. Drops it down to Collins. Up and in. Count it. You'll go to the line. Well, since the timeout, Oceanside has come out and executed on both ends. You see here, nice bouncer. Left off for Collins. Hoop and harm. Schaff on the foul. In the game for the Red Riots, by the way, Caden Gray, junior, number 14. Collins, good from the line. Five points in the early going for Alex Collins. Three-point game. Orono with the lead and the ball. Walston picks up the dribble looking at Foster. Spalding in the corner. Finds Gray. They reset. Walston takes and makes. Pretty dribble drive by Pierce Walston. Little in and out dribble. Wasn't Euro a whole lot of through. room there, was it? <laughs> oh, Euro stepped right through. Didn't look like he had much of a lane, did he? Carter Galley steps away from Walston. Puts it up. Too strong. Can it be run down? No. Red Riot basketball. Ben Francis back on the floor for Orono. Ellis Spalding checks out. Ben Tripp comes in, junior for the Mariners. Pierce Walston, Will Francis. Comes to Caden Gray. Sails wide. Cohen Galley for three. It's going to be short. Might have been tipped. Down court is Ben Francis. Boy, they love to make that pass. Travel on Ben Francis. Smart job by Ben Francis to not force that in transition. Slows it up, finds his brother, but his brother, brother travels. Cohen Galley. Takes a look at Walston. Carter Galley still out here wide. Bartlett, baseline. And is blocked, but fouled. They're going to say Will Francis, 32 and maroon. And Bartlett goes to the line to shoot two. 45.9 seconds to go, first quarter. Bartlett's looking to become the eighth player combined for both teams to score already in this one. We knew we were going to have a lot of points on the board here tonight. Rich Nolan and Pierce Walston had a conversation briefly in the lane. Bartlett had a nice tournament to get them here. One of those glue guys. You know, the galleys may get a lot of the, the headlines and a, and a lot of focus on them. But boy, does he help out this team in a lot of ways. Bartlett's a senior leader, averages seven rebounds a game. Does the dirty work. Not happy going back up the floor on the missed free throws. Walston. Steps inside, no good. And knocked out of bounds. They're going to say it was off Ben Francis. It'll be Mariner basketball with 33 seconds to go in the first. See Walston working the pivot foot along the baseline with the step through. That's the old man at the YMCA move right yeah. there. I like that. Just couldn't get the finish. Larry Reed wanted Carter Galley back in the game, but Rich Nolan had already presented the ball. Sorry, he can't come in. Back he goes to the bench.
Cohen Galley. Under 10. Got Will Francis ahead of him. Stolen away. Here comes Will Francis. Take and make. What a big play to end this first quarter. 0.2 seconds left on the board. And Will Francis, you see here in transition, takes a peek up at the scoreboard. By the way, he's coming right at you. Takes a peek at the no. defender. He says, I'm going to go ahead and finish this and one as he falls through your living room. Hazardous duty pay for the cameraman. He got the shot, though. He does. He got it. Will Francis converts on the free throw. It's 20 to 12 at the end of the first quarter of play in the boys' Class B state championship game. We got more fun in store for you. Don't go anywhere. You're watching state championship basketball on Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Sheridan Construction, a Maine company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981 with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. You look again on the floor of the Portland Expo, Oceanside Mariners with the ball. Trailing by eight to open the second quarter. Galley up and in. Carter Galley opens the scoring in the second quarter for the Mariners. Carter has a team high six. A little bit of uncomfortable position here for the Mariners. They, they don't spend a lot of time in a scoring deficit against the teams they're playing. Caden Gray hands it back. Pierce Walston takes a look at Zeb Foster. Francis, hello. Ben Francis is feeling it. Ten points, game high in the early going. Second three-pointer. Rise and fire with confidence, young fella. Foster to Bartlett. Bartlett turns the corner, puts it up. Around the rim, no good, and it's off. Collins out of bounds. Red Riot basketball. And the replay. Dribble drive. Gets low in that front shoulder to get around the defender, but can't make it. Can't get the finish there. It's going to be out of bounds. Red Riot basketball. Everybody looking to help out the official. Ah, it's going the other way, right? All right. Pierce Walston. Into Francis. Francis. Two Francis. Kept in bounds. Nice play. Great hustle. Carter Galley. Carter Galley. Took a look, head fakes, leaves it short. Running away with it. Ben Francis now slows it down. Pierce Walston, Zeb Foster guarding him. Bounce pass, goes out of bounds off the foot of Alex Collins. He wished, he wished it didn't, but. Walston? Let's see if it's right. Yep, just, just barely. Pierce Walston into Francis. The shaft up no good. Cohen Galley with the rebound. Nice cut, good find. Couldn't get the finish. To Bartlett, Bartlett. Carter Galley says spread out. I think I know where I'm going with this. And he's going to take a three and make a three. How about that confidence? Long range three ball. Knocked down by Anybody Carter who Galley. saw him on this floor last week knows he can do it. Pierce Walston. Six-point game. Bartlett falls down. Francis. Ben turns and gets fouled. Going to be on one of the galleys. And it's going to be on Cohen Galley. Been impressed with Ben Francis here in the early going. Big, strong drive to the basket. 
Picks up harm. Go to the strike for a pair. You don't want that to come back and bother you, but that's a missed opportunity by Ben Francis on the free throw line. He's about 70% in the regular season. Rare to see him miss two. Ed Cattell is going, he doesn't miss that. That mask doesn't, doesn't add up. Out? Carter Galley in the lane. Fall back, no. Pierce Walston just avoided the travel. Pierce Walston up, no good. Bartlett with the rebound. Back comes Foster. Took a look inside. He was being chased by Will Francis. Cohen Galley up in and to the line. What a tough two by Cohen Galley on the dribble drive. All kinds of harm. Still able somehow to finish. See here, tough drive into the contact. And it's not like they're, the, the, the Galley brothers are not selfish. They will find each other. And there's confidence in their brother being able to put the ball in the basket. Uh, the whole package. They can shoot from outside, dribble drive, move the ball. That's why they're the highest scoring team in the state. Greg Levinsky. I'll give you the easiest scouting report on the Galley brothers for everyone who can't tell them apart because it's really hard. Cohen, lefty. Carter, righty. Carter, scorer. Cohen, distributor. That's how you know the Galleys. That's what you need to know. Tell Cohen to stop scoring then. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. How do identical trends develop into different handed shooters? How does that work? Well, you have to do something to be different. i got to ask my biology teacher. i get back to school tomorrow. Pierce Walston goes down low to Shaft. Back to Walston. Cross court. Head fake. Fake to the basket by Caden Gray, but no good. Out of it comes Foster. Surveys. Cohen Galley to Bartlett. Bartlett. Cohen Galley makes it and goes to the line. Another strong dribble drive by Cohen Galley. I'm going back to Levinsky. Hey, wait a minute. You know, this, this guy's doing the scoring. With the right hand, With the, the right lefty, hand, yeah. Cohen Galley gets it in the heart. One point game. Oceanside trailing by one, but perhaps not for long. No. Will Francis down to the loose ball and. Red Riots want a timeout. Ed Capella, not so sure he likes the tenor of these things. Main Principles Association builds partnerships that provide a network of resources, exemplars of leadership, and a culture of collaboration for the benefit of all school community members. For more information about how the Main Principles Association promotes sports, promotes scholastic achievement, and much more, check them out at mpa.cc. Cohen and Carter put up 10 points here in this second quarter combined. Outscored Orono by themselves 10 to 3 here in the second quarter. Coach Catala didn't like what he saw. Wanted a timeout to talk it over. So far, he's receiving contributions from everybody, but they've been stuck at 23 for a few minutes now. Pierce Walston comes to Ben Francis. Shaft set the screen. Francis has it knocked off his dribble. Ball goes to the floor. Cohen Galley picks it up. Finds Carter. Carter tries to drive on Gray. Wanted to get a foul called, and now they're going to get one. But it's over the back by Alex Collins. A good box out position there by Ben Francis. Picks up the push foul on Oceanside. Zach Woodman, number two, comes into the game for the second time for the Mariners. Under four minutes to play, second quarter. Championship game number two tonight here at the Portland Expo. Last one of the season. Last one of the season. Been a, Bittersweet. Been quite a week. Francis for three, makes it look easy. But that was behind the NBA three-point line, Dave. They were here this afternoon, Brendan, and... They were having such fun on both ends of the floor. Cohen Galley thought he got fouled. No call. Pierce Walston 
Tries to turn Cohen Dally. Ball stolen away by Cohen and Carter. Up floor, Cohen Dally looks at Walston. Back, up, and in by Woodman. Great decision to move the ball there by Dally. The defender was set up for the charge. Dishes it off to Zach Woodman. He finishes it, and Oceanside is back within two. Three minutes and counting. Second quarter. Will Francis to Schaff. Noah Schaff. Walston. Walston holding high to Will Francis. Takes a turn. Tries to find Schaff and does. Again, now standing on the three-point line of the NBA. Ben Francis, fall away, no good. Cohen Galley on the rebound. Chance to tie or go ahead here. Cohen Galley drives on Will Francis, gives the ball off to Woodman. Back to Cohen Galley. Galley takes a look at Francis to Collins. Little right hand, no good. Will Francis down with a loose ball. See how much attention Cohen Galley draws when he dribble drives into the middle. Able to find an open teammate there, but couldn't finish. It was Collins. Here's Walston. Ball stolen away. Walston doesn't believe it. Carter Galley up, short. Ball goes to the floor, and now we'll get a foul as Shaft. Good contact with Zach Woodman. A big collision there, loose ball action. See here on the rebound, battling for it, diving on the floor, lots of contact. Great compete level in this state championship here tonight. It's been a while since the Expo has hosted state championship games. They're all excited about it, by the way. They hope to have the NPA consider this place favorably in future years. Last time they had one here was 1968. And the boys from Monson defeated Casco in a state class S final. You remember state class S, right? A little before my time. Uh, a little bit before mine, too. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me on that. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. Well, I remember where I was that year. Here's Walston. We got a one point game. Will Francis. Back to Walston. Walston up and in. Nice back screen set for Walston. Yeah, to nice lead pass scoop. by Francis, too. On the money. Zeb Foster. That play going on here. Trying to find Carter Galley. Galley heads into the triple team. Comes to Foster. No good. Loose ball goes to the floor. Just like that, Bartlett says, I can do this. I saw him try that about five times this afternoon to make sure that reverse layup could go. Bartlett gets himself in the scorebook. The fifth starter to score for Oceanside. I don't want you to think I'm a lonely guy, but I was down here all afternoon. <laughs> like, hey, great observations by well, you. The Ellsworth kids came down, the cheerleaders and the team. They had a 2.30 uh, warm-up time on the floor, and then Red Riots came in at uh, at 3.30. But Bartlett and company, they've been here for the week almost. And he came out before the game, and it was like, oh, okay, I know, I know this place. I know how it works. 28-27, Orno with a one-point lead and the ball. Orno end line. Pierce Walston wants to come into Ben Francis and does. Back to Walston. I always want to make sure the inbounder is covered because he'll do that. <laughs> nice strong back down by Walston. <laughs> he drew that play points. up, right? Is, isn't that a sure. standard inbound play? Just a slow back down there. Got it for two. Three point game coming down final 15 seconds, second quarter. Carter Galley off to Cohen, Zeb Foster. Now under 10. Carter Galley takes a look. Bartlett from the corner, no good at the buzzer. We've reached the end of two quarters of play at the Portland Expo. The Orono Red Riots 30, the Oceanside Mariners 27. State Boys Class B Basketball Championship action on Maine Public Television. Halftime coming up.
production of High School Basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Maine Credit Unions have the largest surcharge-free ATM network in Maine with over 250 locations. Surf ATMs at maincreditunions.org. Chinbro, committed to helping build communities and careers. Learn more at chinbro.com. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981 with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. The new season of High School Quiz Show Maine is almost here. Tune in as 16 teams from Fort Kent to South Berwick battle for the championship and the $1,000 grand prize for the school's project graduation. Match wits with some of Maine's best and brightest students in a statewide competition and see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Join me, Todd Guttner, for season six of High School Quiz Show Maine. any place else but you know what there are people who are real night owls out there we have watchers people who are viewing this game from the united kingdom hey thanks guys <laughs> way to stay up late mate <laughs> it's really something the way we're able to beam this all over the world people Love can it. tune in around the country around the world it's really something as we head into our sportsmanship awards presentation we want to thank the folks at fame you know as the finance authority of maine for sponsoring these segments we're about to recognize some great student athletes, and for these student athletes and all high school students at home, did you know there's free money, free money, available to help pay for your education and training beyond high school? Even if you're not sure what you want to do, just file the FAFSA. File now to maximize your aid, and if you need help, apply at FAFSA.gov and get free help from fame at famemaine.com slash FAFSA. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt. We're representing the Maine Principals Association Basketball Committee, our Mr. Eric Curtis, Athletic Administrator at Bonnie Eagle High School, and re retired Athletic Administrator Phil St. Ange. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association, it is an honor to present the sportsmanship banner in boys and girls basketball. This past season, each team was asked to select an opponent they felt was most deserving of receiving a sportsmanship award. Each school selected to receive this recognition has displayed respect, fair play, honesty, and a love for the game. We are pleased to recognize in Boys Class B South the Knights of Poland High School. Here to receive the award representing Poland High School are Coach Bill Flynn, along with players John Patnod, Aiden Morton, Damon Howes, Hunter Brackett, Brady Lawrence, Travis West, Geo Warren, Hayden Christner, and Shane Yorkie. Congratulations, Coach Flynn and the Poland Boys Basketball Squad. Congratulations to the Sportsmanship Banner Award recipients. Standing by is our floor reporter, Greg Levinsky. He's in the far corner. He's been waiting for this. Yeah, I've been waiting for this. We have a special guest, Linda Woodman, who has been watching Oceanside slash Rockland basketball for over 60 years. The grandmother of Zach Woodman, uh, the mother of assistant coach, wife of assistant coach. You've watched basketball for a long time. Where does this Oceanside team rank amongst all of them? It's good. As far as each goes, each was good on its own. 
obviously this is a community that there's generations and generations. It's evident by your family. What, how close knit is this community around basketball and what's it like? It's been very supportive right through all the years I can remember. And I think it's just been a lot of team, not I, me, that type of thing, but a lot of team that brings in the community and the community that supports them. So this year the Boosters group has done a great job. They've done all kinds of stuff. So. What would you say your family or the families that have had multiple generations go through these programs have learned from and, and taken away from these experiences? That's a tough one. We, you learn a lot of respect for those you work with. Um, just a lot of, I look at it in a positive way. With all the things going on these days, I just much prefer seeing kids involved in something like this. Absolutely. Obviously, this team is a state championship and a little state championship experience in your family. Tell us about that. In 1964, our team, which Carl was a captain of, made it to the finals in the regional. They lost the last game of the finals. And then in 92, my son's team, Jeffrey, went to the States and won the gold ball. They beat York that year. And now my grandson's playing tonight, so it's been special. And we'll see what happens in 2023. Hopefully. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Greg. And no, I don't know that woman. I've never met that woman. <laughs> but I remember the team, so there's that. You know, I just look at we're coming up on the 9 o'clock hour on the East Coast. And on the Welsh Coast, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and somebody's watching this game. So, wow. hello. That's commitment. Yeah. See the halftime stats here. Orna Red Riots have committed themselves to making some field goals to the tune of 61% in that first half. Have to think... If that keeps up, they're going to be in good shape here in the second half. Oceanside, for their part, forced eight turnovers by the Red Riots. They want to look to continue that defensively here in the second half. We're going to three-point game. I mean, really, it's, it's going to be <laughs> – we're going to see what happens in the second half, obviously, but it's it's why we're here. Buckle Third up. quarter of play at the Portland Expo between Oceanside and the Orono Red Riots. Coming up in a, just a couple of minutes on the main public broadcasting network. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956, committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. And we're back at the Portland Expo. Don't want anybody to go away, but... You know, there's a classy boys game going on in Bangor. Deergo Cougars and the Callis Blue Devils, 59-56 with two minutes to go on that one. Another so classic. They're, they're having Callis fun up there, too. 59-58. So I stand corrected as that thing gets tighter up there. So I want to thank folks at Maine Public to get an update on that game. Both teams back on the floor, <clears throat> getting ready for the third quarter to play. 30-27, the Orno Red Riots leading the Oceanside Mariners. We said in the pregame, Dave, Orno Red Riots looking to win their first gold ball since 1981. Oceanside looking to win their first ever. The school has existed since 2011. Both going after some school history here this evening. It's going to be a fantastic second half. Let's buckle up. Rich Nolan is again conversing with Pierce Walston. That's a continuation of what they were talking about at the uh, free throw line. 
Now Rich is <laughs> he's extending it. He's talking to Ellis Spalding. It's a demonstrative conversation down there. Yeah, maybe, they're, maybe they're talking about dinner plans after. You know, I never know. Where, where'd you find a place to park? Yeah, you, right. you, you guys get in okay? And yeah, we've been <laughs> we've been here since this afternoon. What are you talking about? All right, here we go. Red Riots will open the third quarter with the ball and the lead. 30-27. Rich Nolan gets the thumb up from the scoring table. Sounds the whistle, and Pierce Walston has the ball in the dribble. Francis momentarily sets the screen. Comes to Spalding. Spalding behind the back dribble. Back to Walston. Bartlett watching him. Shaft. That's the screen. Collins comes out defensively, then retreats. Spalding, no good. Schaff on the rebound. Comes to Francis. Walston for three. No. Will Francis on the rebound. Puts it up. Over Zeb Foster. And it's a five-point lead. Red Riots banging on the backboards. Get the offensive put back to go from Will Francis. They've opened up a five-point lead. Foster, no good. Spalding down to the loose ball. Finds Walston. Walston. Ahead to Will Francis, to Schaff. Schaff was looking at the basket when he should have been looking at the pass. The tic-tac-toe pass from the Riots ended up through the hands of Noah Schaff. And the replay, long pass, touch pass, no yeah. catch. And Larry Reed is going, guys, guys, you got to get back. Player control foul. Gives the ball back to the Red Riots. Team straight turnovers coming out of the locker room. Yeah, the replay. Bartlett gets called foul. Francis to Francis. Back to Francis. A little flip up, almost worked. Collins on the loose ball. Comes to Cohen Galley. Galley gallops into the front court. Will Francis got his hand on the ball. Zeb Foster to Bartlett. Carter Galley telling Collins where he wants him to go. Flips it back to his brother. Cohen Galley drives on Will Francis, steps inside with a Euro step, gets fouled, he'll go to the line. How about that fancy footwork from Cohen Galley going to the line? You see here, one, two, through two defenders, yeah. slices to the basket. He's going to go to the line. If we tried that, we'd be in trash. Oh, to be young, right? That's right. <laughs> Colin Galley at the line, shooting two. Makes the first. Margin is four. Remains four. Pierce Walston. Comes a one-man break. Great patience from Walston. Ellis Spalding never made it to half court. He came down one on four. <laughs> See, I'm just going to watch Walston work, and he gets two. Zeb Foster says, I can do that. First two points of the game for Zeb Foster. He joins the party. Kids have settled in here. Pierce Walston, no. Bartlett with the loose ball finds Cohen Galley. Galley goes by Pierce Walston. Drives on Spalding. Ball goes out of bounds, remains Oceanside basketball. 5.50 to go, third quarter. We know you want to stay with us, so we'll get an update on that Dirigo Callis game. Bartlett, no. Down with it, Schaff. Walson throws, slows things down here. Spalding comes to Francis. Francis steps around Cohen Galley. Puts the ball up. No. Great Collins job by keeps Collins the ball alive. There yeah. in rebounding action. Foster. Back to Cohen Galley. Leaves it short. Will Francis thinks he was fouled. Doesn't get the call. Carter Galley doesn't get the fall on the three point shot. Down court to Spalding. Up and fouled by Collins. One of the things I'm liking about this is the officials are letting the kids play. Yeah, that ball times, is loose, you know. A couple of times they try to get the ball ahead to Spalding. They finally do, just barely over Galley's outstretched hand. 
And Ellis Balding will go to the line, his chance to add his name into the scorebook. Six, 16 seconds to go in that Class C boys game. 64-58, Deergo Cougars with the lead. And likely state champions again. Bartlett down with a missed free throw. Finds Zeb Foster. Four-point game here. Foster back to Bartlett. Back to Foster. Had three passes here and not a galley has touched the ball. Foster doesn't get the bounce. Nice rebound and by Spalding. How about the hand strength by Ellis Spalding to pull that away from Galley? Collins steals the ball away from Pierce Walston, who thought he got hit. Bartlett, player control foul. Great job, Will, Will Francis. Will Francis hits the deck. See on the replay, he sets up in the perfect spot, he anticipates where the dribbler is going to be, and takes a face full of Oceanside to earn the turnover. Congratulations to the Diego Cougars, 65-58 is the final. So Diego and Old Orchard Beach, the Class C state champions tonight. And we're now the last game standing, Brendan. Isn't that a shame? Ben Francis steps around, Galley leaves it short. Caden Gray, nice play. Carter Galley knocks it loose. Cullen Galley picks it up to Foster. Foster. Pierce Walston. They say, oh, yeah, Pierce committed a foul. At least that's what the Oceanside folks want. Shot by Carter Galley, no good, and back come the Orono Red Riots. Great Been 34 30 in for a while, yeah. Great dribble move by Carter Galley to get that good look, just couldn't hit the little fadeaway. Pierce Walston, Schaff, Schaff. Walston. Walston takes a look. He's got Foster on him. Wants to do something good. 34-30 forever here. Ben Francis for three. Yes. Francis, hand in his face, steps in with confidence, knocks down the three ball. Greg Levinsky, what do you got? Guys, it's amazing. Orono shooting from the field today. 53%, 57% from three. And almost three guys in double figures already, despite having less than 40 points. Cohen Galley answers for three. Nothing but the Thanks, bottom Greg. of the net by Cohen Galley. 33-37. Uh, Marin is still trailing by four, and Alex Collins again with a steal. Zeb Foster on the dribble. Pierce Walston stops that. Back comes Carter Galley. Drives on Ben Francis. Finds Foster. Back to Cohen. Cohen steps inside. Ball tossed out of bounds, and he's going to say Red Riot basketball. Larry Reed wants a foul call, and he's pointed to Rich Nolan saying, Randy Caswell should have called that foul. Yeah, one coach wanted a block, one coach wanted a charge. Neither one got what they wanted. It's just a turnover. And it's a four-point game with 2.34 to go in the third. Do you have a complaint? I don't think I have a complaint. Do you have a complaint? I'm loving life. There we go. Oh, three-point shot, Caden Gray. First points of the game for Caden Gray comes in off the bench firing. Says, let me just knock this down real quick. We get a seven-point lead. Cohen Galley launches a three. No. Collins with the rebound. Stolen away by Ben Francis. Has Will ahead of him. Flips it to Will. Will Francis. Out high to Caden Gray to Shaft. Shaft. Back to Ben Francis for three. No. Stolen away by Pierce Walston. Takes a look at Cohen Galley. Down low to Ben Francis. Back to Caden Gray. Behind the back pass, right into the hands of Carter Galley. Carter Galley driving on Gray. Flips it cross court to Cohen Galley for three. Steps aside from Ben Francis. Can't make the three. Collins keeps it alive. Caden Gray out with it. Great patience by Cohen Galley. Let the defender go by. Sets up a wide open three ball. Couldn't hit it. Seven-point game. Coming down to the one-minute mark in the third. Down low to Shaft. Shaft up and in. Great drive by Walston. 
find the big fella underneath, and Noah separates the wheat from the shaft. I heard you that. That's funny. Thank you. I've been workshopping that one all afternoon. You had Noah where to go? And... Carter Galley, no. Pierce Walston, down court to Will Francis, gathers it, takes a look, puts it up and in. Uh-oh, transition game getting underway for the Red Riots. 11-point lead now. Carter Galley for three. Much needed points. Carter Galley says not so fast. He's got 12 now in the game. Deliberate dribble by Pierce Walston. 20, minute, uh, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Takes it baseline. Little jumper, no good. Collins down with it. Finds Carter Galley. He's 10 seconds and counting. Carter Galley steps inside, puts it up around the rim, no good. Collins on a putback is a good. And just like points. that, it's a six point game at the end of three. Don't go away. We got eight minutes of basketball coming your way. The last of high school basketball until the McDonald's All Star game. But this one counts for the gold ball. 44 38, Orono leading Oceanside on Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981 with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. Sheridan Construction, a Maine company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. Fourth. Back to Jeff Foster, Bartlett. Back to Carter Galley. Oceanside, high quality team here. Not rattled, trailing by six. Foster. And Ben Francis steals the ball, goes to the floor, gets tied up. Possession arrow, Red Riots. It does eventually secure the turnover for the Red Riots. See here, Foster stops, loses it. Francis takes a slap to the face there in the action, inadvertent. He still secures the turnover. Spalding. Short gets his own rebound. Too strong. Shaft goes to the floor. Bodies down. Collins gets hit. Shaft is saying, I didn't do it. Carter good. Galley in the lane. Up. In. 14 for Carter. You now, boys want to decide this. They shouldn't be looking for a random whistle. Ben Francis, stutter step, up and in. What a pretty dribble drive move by Ben Francis. Finishes on the opposite side, right hand on the left side of the rim. He's got a game high, 18 points. Cohen Galley, this Foster, corner to Bartlett. They reset. Hand in the passing lane. Pierce Walston, up and in. Walston under control the entire time. Doesn't just sprint to the basket, but he plays the defender, shields the defender from the ball, finishes the deuce. On the run, Cohen Galley, no good. Gets the put back up and in. Larry Reed wants a timeout for the Oceanside Mariners. They trail by six. You know, broadcast of the Maine State High School Basketball Championships has been made possible by members. Members, that is, since 1979. Thank you to the tens of thousands of people who helped make this annual tradition available to fans around the world, like whoever's watching in the United Kingdom at 2 o'clock in the morning. And it's done for free. To show your support for basketball on Maine Public Television, become a member. 
head to mainpublic.org. Click that big red donate button. And by the way, thank you. We're having a ball here tonight. We hope you are too. 48-42. Orno with the lead and the ball. 6 minutes 14 seconds left to decide this state championship. See which of these big time players are going to step up here in the big time moment. Francis hands the ball off to Pierce Walston. Foster shadows him up the court. Tries to keep him from coming inside and does. Will Francis to Ben Francis. Will Francis. Watched by Bartlett. Doesn't have a whole lot to do. Decides to shoot it. Why not? Will Francis surveyed his options. So go ahead and knock down this elbow jumper. Ben Francis on the steal. Makes it look easy. Two more for Big Ben. He's got 20. Just like that, it's a 10-point lead. Foster. Ball knocked loose. Picked up by Schaff, and we're going to get a foul call on the play, and it may be Cohen Gallagher. Red Riot players, Will Francis. In the replay, Pierce ball is Walsh loose. Is. Oh, two players just hard contact there. You think these two teams want this gold ball here tonight, Dave? Well, once the threshold's been established and there's body contact like that and they haven't called it, the kids are going to ramp it up further. just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. 52-42. Orono leading Oceanside. We can do the math. That's 10 points. High School Quiz Show, main season six, about to begin. 16 teams from across Maine are competing to see who will be this year's champion and bring home the $1,000 prize. Tune in for the season premiere on Thursday, March 23rd, 8 o'clock, right here on Maine Public Television. If I'm Ed Catella, I'm thinking I'm okay. If I'm Larry Reed, fellas, they're meeting us in... Half court defense, they're okay. It's just when they're they're not taking care of the basketball, or Orono's defense is becoming that much more dominant because they're getting some transition basketballs and breakaway stuff. Yeah, this lead has moved up to ten points. They're gonna dig back into this one. It has to stop with defensive stops and some rebounds, maybe some easy ones in transition. Ben Francis back to Will Francis back to Ben Francis. They beat the press. Ben Francis, front court. Ted Spalding, left corner, decides against it. Comes to Pierce Walston out high. Body contact by Carter Galley. Now Oceanside's only committed. That's just their fourth team foul. So if they're going to want to put Orno on the line here, they need to commit three more and before they Carter, shoot. Carter looks at Caswell and goes, well, you didn't call that in the first half. Well, yeah, but you were a little more obvious in the second half. Oh. Pierce Walston broke to the corner. He was all alone. Ben Francis didn't see him. Sees him now. Noah Schaff back to Pierce Walston. Walston takes a look. Comes to Spalding. Spins away from Carter Galley. Orno's going to play the keep away game. Run the clock off. Ben Francis takes a look. Ooh. Steps inside. Shaft up and fouled. Greg Levinsky. You see how disciplined this team is, and it's no wonder why. I mean, Ed Catala, what a crazy coaching career he had. He was a grad assistant at Florida, an assistant at Clemson, assistant at UMKC, Kansas City, which is also Division I, and then a six year head coach in a D3 program. So. The discipline, obviously, that he learned as a coach at that level has certainly translated, and his team really plays the way he wants them to, and they certainly respect each other. Well, he's got a good idea on March Madness. <laughs> Schaff makes an 11-point game, four and a half to go. Seven for Schaff. Foster wants to go to Bartlett. Collins goes to the floor, throws the ball away. Red Riot basketball. Oceanside's running out of possessions. Down by 11 points. They need to at least get shots off every time. Down now. Larry Reed is trying to convince 
Brother Caswell that there was a foul there, but he's not getting it. Ben Francis drives on Collins, backs it out. Spalding down low to Will Francis. Ball stolen away by Bartlett. Goes to the floor, keeps it alive. Cohen Galley ahead to Zeb. Foster goes to Carter Galley. Back to Zeb Foster. To Collins. Carter Galley. Pierce Walston picks him up. Gives it off to Cohen Galley. Knocked away by Pierce Walston. Will Francis. Front court. Has Shaft. Goes without him. Will Francis says, let me just take this myself. Coast to coast for the finish. Carter Galley to his brother, Cohen. Pierce Walson almost knocked that one loose as well. Carter Galley to Collins. And now we're going to get a foul on Noah Schaff. On the floor. Randy Caswell says, uh, no, the shot wasn't in motion. It went to the floor. See Galley. Spins to his left. Contact there. Tries to throw the ball up. Smart basketball IQ play there. It's going to Bart be baseline. Bartlett about. goes out. Ben Tripp in for the Mariners. Three-point shot attempt by Galley. Carter Galley, no good. Pierce Walston, bothered by Carter Galley. Drives by Foster. Goes down low to Ben. Flips it back and now stolen by Carter Galley. He sees Tripp coming with him. Takes the ball up and in. Pretty sure that would have been called a goaltending where he slapped the backboard like that. Two more for Ball Carter. stolen away by Tripp. Foster steps away from traffic. Let's fly with the three. No. And it's going out of bounds off Collins as Shaft goes to the floor. Two and a half minutes to go. Yeah, Foster had a good look at that one to close it back down to within 10 points. He elevates. Back rim, no good. Letting the boys play, and I, it's been a high-quality game. I think, you know, somebody's going to say, well, he could have called more fouls. Could have been. No. No, let the kids decide it. They've done a good job so far. And you can't can't deny how competitive both these teams have been. And how about the brother battle? The Francis brothers for Orono have combined for 33 points. The Galley brothers on the other side have combined for 30 points. Wow. About what you expected when we opened this thing. You know, main high school basketball fan who is out of state or even out of the country, like in the United Kingdom, 10 countries, 11 countries, 47 states and counting. Let them know they can watch any of the state final games we are broadcasting for free on our website. Live and on demand, these games can be seen for free anywhere in the world. Tell them to head to mainpublic.org slash basketball. Ben Francis into Will. Under 2.30 to play and a travel on Will Francis. He had no place to go and Tripp was right in front of him. Yeah, that's not what Coach Ed Catala drew up in the timeout for the Red Riots. I want you to go over there and travel. That's right. No. no let's go back on defense. Zeb Foster. Come to Cohen Galley. And a reach around foul by Pierce Walston. Just the third team foul on Orono. No danger of the bonus. Carter Galley. Signals to Collins where he wants him to go. Comes to Cohen Galley. Cohen Galley. Back to Carter. Double team. Top of the circle. Comes to Foster. Cohen Galley. Steps away from Shaft. Back to Carter Galley. Jumps into the lane. Puts it up and in. Quick timeout by Larry Reed. 157 to go. Nine point game. Orna with the ball in the lead. Larry Reed with the timeout. Still a lot of time left. Almost two full minutes here. Orono needs to take care of the ball and make foul shots. Well, this extended tournament week of championship basketball on Maine Public has been outstanding. It's been really fun here. Of course, you look in the record books, you see that empty line from 2021. 
And last year we were back. This year it feels like we are fully 100% back to the main high school basketball tournaments. What a feeling it is. Fans on both sides applauding these kids, as they should. 157 to go, a nine-point game. Two regional champions eyeballing each other. Ben Francis to inbound for the Red Riots. Full court defense by the Mariners. Will Francis up and in. He ran the flag pattern. Ben hit Will for the two. They've never run that play. Did you know that? <laughs> Looks like a time or two in the driveway, didn't it? Yeah, you go long. Carter Galley, no good. Francis, or Noah Schaff goes to the floor, and Will Francis gets tied up with Carter Galley. Part, possession arrow, Oceanside Mariners. 1.34 to go. 11-point game. Oceanside needs some help here. Collins. Cohen Galley for three. Yes. Cohen Galley, three more. 17 for Cohen. This time it's Ben Carter. Francis on the take. Ben Francis on the make. And he goes to the line to shoot the traditional three-point play. Cohen Galley on the foul call. Two plays in a row. Look at this. Baseball pass up ahead. Ben Francis catches. Can't, can't argue the foul call. All Big kinds of call contact it. there. Francis, great body control to absorb that contact. Still finish. Waves his brother off. Says, oh, yeah. fine. Yeah. Go balls on the line, brother. Get out of here. Yeah, he might be able to say little brother for another year. Yeah. Misses a free throw. You got a lane violation. Says, you guys are stepping in too quick. So we'll do it again. Red Riot faithful can feel it over here on our side. Ten-point lead. 84 ticks of the clock remaining. Ben Francis makes good on the second. Another timeout here by Ed Catello. South Portland Red Riots won their gold ball last night. Orono Red Riots looking to win theirs here tonight. Fun fact, Dave, those are the only two high schools in America with that nickname, with that mascot, and they're both going to win state championships this winter, it's looking like. Now, you held back on that all day? Yeah, I kept it you in the You could have shared that earlier. That's right. <laughs> the only two now. teams were, it's the Arno and South Portland Red Riots. Yeah. Okay, then. Something. Fun fact. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, there's a trivia game that needs this question somewhere <laughs> in Maine. Yeah, jot that down. Ed Catala is drawing attention to something. Talking to Rich Nolan. I think he said, I think Ben Francis might have blood on his jersey. He needs to go change it. They were just making sure that's. Oh, wait. oh he just, all right, he's just uh, cramped up. He just needs some water. He'll be fine. Caden Gray back in the game for Ben Francis. Carter Galley for three. Yes. 21 for Carter. Pierce Walston. Fake the down court pass again and a quick push. Ben Tripp on the foul call. Pierce Walston to the free throw line. Ben Francis back in. See Walston here looking for contact. Kane Gray it. checks out. Go to the line. 108 to go. Good look. At the Orono Junior, misses a free throw. Cohen Galley. Brother Carter for three. Yes. Oh, we're not done yet, Dave. 24 points for Carter Galley. Five point game. Ben Francis. Finds Will Francis. Reach in foul again. One and one for the he last didn't, time. He didn't want to think that, think that but Ben Tripp. Compared to some of the things that haven't been called tonight as these kids have gone at it. Just a little touch there. Will Francis goes to the line. Didn't really bother Will Francis much, but he'll, he'll accept the call. He oh, misses it. Yet. Cohen Galley. 
Steps around Ben Francis. Finds Foster to Carter Galley. Back to Foster. Into the lane. He's fouled. Nope, on the floor. On the floor. Randy Caswell says the reach in occurred before he elevated for the shot. Get a good shot there at Larry Reed. Or no, all of a sudden, desperately needs a stop here. Collins looks inside. Comes to Carter Galley. Long three. It's going to be short. Knocked out of ball, out bounds by Zeb Foster. Under 30 seconds. So he had a good look at it. Just off the side rim. Out of bounds. Yeah, he wanted it off Spalding. Didn't get it. Will Francis intended for that pass. Knocked away by Ben Tripp. He's trying to find somebody named Galley. Does. Cohen Galley. Long three. No. Carter Galley. They go to the floor. Noah Schaff comes out of there. Spalding with it. And a grab finally by Carter Galley. 14 and a half seconds to go. Five point game. And wouldn't you know. How about that? These Oceanside Mariners, though, fighting right until the end. Come back to within five points. They're not done yet. A couple misses here. Never know. Red Riot senior goes to the line. The only senior. Ellis Spalding at the line. Two shots. Two shots. Caden Gray back in, and Noah Schaff out for the Red Riots. Well, Spalding got back on defense in a hurry, didn't he? He's, he's got one more shot, though. He'll bring him back down here for one more. There's a big one to make it six. Pierce Walston steps in just in case it, there's a miss. He can grab the rebound. Well, Spalding leaves that one short. Cohen Galley has to move it. Comes to Carter Galley. Elevates for three, makes the three. Are you kidding me? And a quick timeout now by Larry Reed. Back within two, 27 points 60, now. 60-58. Three consecutive three-pointers made by Carter Galley late, late in this game, and we're down to just two points. Orono needs to inbound, hang on to the ball. Larry Reed called the timeout. Two-point game, Coach, what are you doing? Well, if you're Orono, you're drawing up your best play to get the ball inbounds, probably to Walston, but you just want to get the ball in and secure it. You don't even need to get the ball over half court. You've got 10 seconds, so once you get the ball inbounds, just hang on and get fouled. Oceanside, you have to deny the inbounds pass harder than you have all season. They just earned a steal off the inbounds a minute ago. They need another one right here. Ben Francis will do the inbound. Another Red Riot. Take the ball and go. There it is. And Ellis Spalding to Caden Gray. And a quick foul. And Caden Gray will go to the line to shoot two with 2.7 seconds to go. It is possible. Possible. If he makes neither free throw or makes only one. Then we could have a long shot here at the buzzer, if so. And we've already seen that. Oceanside can make a long basket. This is the first. This is about as it should be, don't you think? This is a great end to the high school basketball season. Bartlett and Collins getting set to come in for the Oceanside Mariners. Woodman and Tripp check out. 2.7 2.7 seconds to go. On a make or a miss, it doesn't matter. You're going to have about two dribbles and put up a long shot here. And the make. Quick timeout. 2.7 seconds remain. The ball will be inbounded at the end line. It has to go the length of the court. Clock doesn't start until somebody touches the ball inbounds. So if you can make that pass and make it work, you don't want the foul. Right, Oceanside wants to get somebody moving forward with momentum. 
towards the basket where they're going to. They have to go the length of the court. If you can get somebody circled around and moving in the right direction and hit them in stride, they have two dribbles, and they can get a shot off here. It might be a half-court shot, but it will be a shot. And Ed Cotale is saying, you know what? If Carter Galley has the ball across half-court, do not foul him. He's going up with a shot. I'd rather have it tied than have a free throw come out this after he makes a three-point shot from downtown. And you wonder, actually, if Orno's talking about fouling before Oceanside even inbounds the ball with a three-point lead. Okay, they got to watch this one now. They Gray, Francis, Spalding, Francis, and Walston on the floor. Bartlett comes to Collins. Collins heaves it for three, and it's wide. The Orono Red Riots are your state champions in Class B. Oh, that half-court shot looked online from my vantage point. Just barely off. That's how it should be right there. Oceanside battle to the last second. And Orono High School wins their first gold ball since 1981. Physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. These kids have got a long bus ride. I want to see every one of them in school tomorrow. First thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had it. They were ahead by 10 or 11 points wow. really late in this game. They All of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute, what happened? It's down to two. They hang on by the skin of their teeth. Wow, what a game. Well, as we learned, these kids know one another, several of them. The kids have you know, become household names over these two weeks. What a gallant Oceanside comeback. It lands just short. 61-58. The Orno Red Riots are state champs. 27 points from Carter Galley. He hit three consecutive three-pointers late in the fourth quarter to get back within two. They could not get any closer, but what a valiant effort by Carter and Cohen Galley, especially 41 points combined. You know, there are people, people from away who marvel at tournament basketball season in Maine. They, they, they go, oh, what, what's the big deal? We've seen it here tonight. See what a big deal looks like? Coach Katala, nice scene. He comes over to hug his family, his wife and daughters. They flew in from around the country to be here for this game tonight. To see Coach Katala win the gold ball with the Riots. There he goes to a kid who did a lot of the hard work inside. Noah Schaaf, Al Will Francis. <laughs> He's not going to stop smiling. Ben Francis. How about the performance from Ben Francis? 23 points. He was sensational on both ends. But the Orono defense held Oceanside to just 58 points. They averaged 80 on the season. They're the highest scoring team in the state. They held them more than 20 below their season average. They're still trying to figure out how, they, how they're going to get the, the nets down. Kevin McVie says, okay, fine, go for it. I think Celtics practice here this afternoon, but I think they can get a net up here by the time they have a game of practice tomorrow. Goal ball is on the table. Don Atkinson is going over the individual scoring stats. There are no student section dressed in a, kind of a Valentine pink are coming down to cheer on their kids. Well, we were told yesterday by the event staff here that they expected a full house tonight because uh, Spruce Mountain travels well, Oceanside travels well, Orono travels well, and what did we see? We saw a full house. You know, the, the Orono kids came in, cheered on the Ellsworth kids, Ellsworth also traveled well. Again, congratulations to Old Orchard Beach and Dirigo, winning in Class C in Bangor. South Portland and Oxford Hills in Class AA. It's been 42 years since any Orono fans have seen this site. The Red Riots cutting down the nets after a state championship. They're about to hoist that gold ball.
And with so many kids still coming back, Spalding's the only one that they lose, a starter. Oh, yeah, they're going to be right back in the next year. Coach Catala's club to bring back a lot. They were led by juniors this year. These senior leaders next year. Good luck. Yeah, and after you've tasted it in an atmosphere like this, I don't think you, you recoil from the prospect of doing it again. What a night at the Expo. Both games right down to the wire. Enormous crowd, great energy. What a nightcap, what an end to the main high school basketball season. Ellis Spalding, they're waiting for him, the senior to finish cutting the net at the far end as he turns to Pierce Walston. You ready? Here's the... Will Francis goes up, Ben Francis goes up, the brothers. Perhaps the Maine Principals Association will give dispensation to the principal of Orono High School and say, uh, go ahead, take the day off tomorrow. Hang around if you want. Greg Levinci will be speaking to the Red Riots after the awarding of the hardware here on what has been an amazing night of basketball. This time we ask Let's go to Don Atkinson. To direct your attention to midcourt. We're representing the Maine Principals Association Basketball Committee, a Mr. Tom Danlick of Mountain Valley High School and Mr. Eric Curtis of Bonnie Eagle High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Maine Principals Association Class B Basketball Committee, we congratulate the Mariners of Oceanside High School and the Red Riots of Orono High School on outstanding regular seasons and on your play in the regional basketball tournament. Both communities should be proud of your efforts in reaching today's Class B State Championship contest. At this time, we invite Larry Reed, head coach of Oceanside High School, and his assistants, Jeff Woodman, Carl Woodman, and Trevor Reed, to help present the individual awards to the Oceanside team members. Manager, Sophia Ray. Freshman, Jackson K. Sophomore, Zeb Foster. Sophomore, Zach Woodman. Sophomore, Parker Darge. Sophomore, Dominic Frizone. Junior, Cohen Galley. Junior Cotter Galley. Junior Ben Tripp. Junior Joey Bell. Junior Maddox Robichaud. (laughs) 
senior Alex Bartlett. Senior Alex Collins. And Senior Jack Elwell. Would the captains from Oceanside High School please come forward? On behalf of the Maine Principals Association, it is our pleasure to present you this plaque, emblematic of the State Class B runners up. Congratulations, Coach Reed and Oceanside High School. At this time, we invite Ed Kotala, head coach of Orono High School, and his assistants, Ryan Charette, Kyle Ames, and Braden Soul, to help present the individual awards to the Orono High School team members. We begin with manager, Caden, you are cousins. Manager, Michael Tui. Freshman, Brady Hughes. Freshman, Bergen Soderberg. Freshman, Matt Allen. Sophomore, Will Francis. Sophomore, Noah Schaff. Junior Pierce Walston. Junior Caden Gray. Junior Ben Francis. Junior Luke Sotoma. Junior Sebastian Venetestein. Junior Adam Sherman. Junior Mason Kenny and Senior Ellis Spaulding. Coach Ed Cotella, would you please come forward to accept the game ball? Would the captains from Orono High School please come forward? On behalf of the Maine Principals Association, it is our pleasure to present you the Class B State Championship Gold Ball. Congratulations, Coach Cotella and the Orono High School basketball squad.
Hey, they're going to have a fun time on the ride back to Penobscot County. We're going to have a fun time talking to them in a minute. We'll be back at the Portland Expo after this timeout. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Get cash and forget the surcharge fees with Maine Credit Union's Surf ATM Network. Find over 250 surcharge-free ATMs at maincreditunions.org. Chinbro, committed to helping build communities and careers. Learn more at chinbro.com. Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. You look again at a happy group of Red Riots. There are only two groups of Red Riots, and they're both happy this weekend. <laughs> Extremely happy. Gold Ball is going to go back to their trophy cases. South Portland in Double A, and here are the Orono Red Riots in Class B. And as you heard, Brendan, they're the only Red Riots in the country, and by gosh, they got a claim to fame this weekend and the extended week. What a week of basketball here on Main Public, as we have seen plenty of championship play and a deserving victor tonight as the Orono Red Riots came down here and has a long ride and you know, extended their, their tournament run and... Credit to the Oceanside Mariners who came back. Wow, it was really something. Greg Levinsky is standing by. I think he's got a couple of kids who have something in their hands. We are here with the champs. First of all, you're the senior, but what happened here? (laughs) Frustration. Oh, it was frustration. Yeah, but, there, but there's no frustration anymore, right? I didn't realize it was going to rip this easily. I barely pulled on it. It just, like, ripped it. It shattered my hands. But they're not frustrated now? Oh, absolutely not. I'm on top of the world right now. Obviously... You do it. You finish it. A lot of people had big games. You're holding the gold ball. I mean, leading scorer too. What went into tonight's performance for you and for the whole team? Oh, we all had we all had our mindset. But all the doubters that have been that doubted us on the on the social media pages, saying that that we didn't have what it took and that we were going to get shut out. But you know, look where we are now, and look where they are still sitting on the sidelines. I mean, you guys ran through a lot of different teams that were pegged to be favorites, right? And to be here at the end, what does that say about this team? I mean, what is there really more to say, you know? I mean, we're here, and we're holding this gold ball, and ain't no one else got that. So, Guys, as a whole, how's this one feel? It feels amazing. So good. Oh let's my go. God. This is awesome. Finally. All right, let's find Coach. Where's Coach? Where's Coach? Coach, here we go. He's famous. You've coached a lot of teams at a lot of levels. Yeah. These guys are champs. What do you have to say about these guys? Well... What's so amazing about this group is each gave a little bit of themselves. We talked early in the season. We said, we know what, I said, I know what you all believe you can give to the team. I said, what are you willing to give up for the team? And each of them gave up a piece of themselves, a piece of their heart to make this happen. Congrats, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Craig, and congratulations to the owner Red Riots. Congratulations to the Oceanside Mariners. What a game. And game two, and... This began last Friday, and then we, we had the storm interruption, and then we have to come back. We do the double A's on Monday, and, and we, we look at the D's, the C's, uh, and tonight the B's, and we just had a tremendous week of basketball here on Main Public. It's why we come here. It's why this is fun to do. Um, we hope that you folks in, at home have enjoyed it. Uh, hit that big red donate button on the way by. And if you're in the United Kingdom, uh, you can send money overseas as well. Uh, Brendan, nice working with you. Uh, thanks to the crew from uh, Maine Public. They've done yeoman service here and get games ready in so many venues over such a spread period of time. That does it for Maine Public and Championship High School Basketball here. Uh, check your listings. You can see these games uh, on demand, and they're worth another view.